cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God has called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Tross and took a straight course to Sumatra. The following day, we went to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the woman who had brought us. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Tyathira and a dealer of purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her house, when she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, "If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home." And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. We will be reading the Psalm 67 in unison. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples of equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the land through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing is personal shall be found there any more. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be upon their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of the lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
Jesus said to Judas, not Iscariot, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine but is from the father who sent me. I said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. During my retreat in Alabama a few weeks ago, one of our suppers at the monastery was a mindful meal. We began in the usual way, getting our plates of food from the kitchen, and then we found our seats and we waited as Sister Mary gave us instructions. She had us take three mindful breaths, and then she told us to notice what we saw on our plates. The colors and the shapes of the different foods, various ingredients that were part of the meal. And then we were told to imagine all that was needed in order to get each of these things on our plate. We reflected on and gave thanks for the sun and the rain and the fertile earth, the cows that became milk, that became cheese that some of us had, the chickens that some of us were about to eat, the farmers and factory workers, the truck drivers and kitchen staff, the roads traveled to get the food to us and those who built and maintained those roads, the clean water we had to wash our food and dishes, the power we needed to cook our food, and on and on and on. Finally, we were allowed to take a bite and Sister Mary asked us, when we took our first bite to notice the textures and the flavors of the first bite. I chose a cherry tomato from my salad, which I think was a really good choice because there are different textures and flavors on the outside than on the inside, and you get that satisfying pop when you bite into it. <laughs> we were allowed then to have a few more mindful bites, and then we were told to share with someone else at our table what we've noticed so far. And that is when I must confess some of us have or extroverted clergy women accidentally hijacked the whole exercise because we kept talking and laughing and we never got, quite got back to the meditative silence we were supposed to be in. Sorry, Sister Mary. <laughs> While it lasted, though, our mindful meal was a revelatory experience. It was a huge change from the often mindless meals many of us experience most of the time. And some of those are lovely because we're talking with someone, enjoying good company, and laughing, but at the end, sometimes we can barely remember what we ate or what the food tasted like because we were talking or laughing or reading or watching TV or otherwise distracted throughout the meal. Our reading from the Gospel according to John this morning is a feast, and I suggest that we approach it like a mindful meal. All of John's Gospel is amazingly rich, but chapters 14 through 17, which together are called Jesus' farewell discourse, beg us to really slow down, to notice things, to contemplate each word or phrase or bite. The farewell discourse is Jesus' long goodbye to the disciples after the Last Supper has ended, the night before he's crucified. And these chapters are so rich with meaning. There's so much to chew over and savor. Every phrase could be food for meditation or prayer or 
wholly wondering. We have seven verses from chapter 14 as our gospel reading this morning, and I just want to look at a few of them. Jesus begins, those who love me will keep my word. Those who love me will keep my word. Let's say for just that for a moment. Jesus reminds his disciples here that we love Jesus by what we do and the way we live our lives. Acting in love is what it means to love Jesus and be a disciple of Jesus. Yes, we could admire Jesus and go on about our lives unchanged. Lots of people do that. But if we love him, if we really love Jesus and want to follow him, everything is reframed by that love. And we have to do life differently. We'll still sin. We won't always get the doing of love right. We won't live lives of perfect love, but we will be committed to loving God with all our hearts and minds and strength and loving our neighbors, all of our neighbors, as ourselves. We will commit ourselves to compassion and forgiveness, to mercy and hospitality and reconciliation. All of that, just from that first bite, those who love me will keep my word. Like a ripe cherry tomato, just that one bite gives us so much to notice and taste to think about. Let's take another bite. Those who love me will keep my word, Jesus says, and my Father will love them. My Father will love them. Jesus reassures those who do love him and are striving to keep this word that God loves them. Remember that these words in John's Gospel are spoken by Jesus to his disciples as he is preparing to go to the cross. He is saying goodbye to them. Very soon, these disciples will face terrible challenges to their relationship with Jesus and their fledgling belief that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. They are hungry. These disciples are hungry for reassurance. They're more famished than maybe they even know for some taste of comfort in their sorrow and their confusion and fear. So Jesus says to them, essentially, God loves you no matter what comes. No matter what you see me endure, no matter what you face, God loves you. God loves you. The next fight, after saying, my Father will love them, Jesus says, and we will come to them and make our home with them. We will come to them and make our home with them. I feel like this fight is one of those that makes you remember a special meal you've had before. Maybe your senses carry you back to a cafe in Paris, or your grandmother's kitchen table, or a cookout with your scout troop when you were a kid. In this case, we will come to them and make our home with them. I bring you back to the beginning of John's Gospel, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. You might remember Jesus' words from earlier in this very chapter of John. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And at the end of today's reading, we'll hear Jesus say again, I am going away and I am coming to you. It really seems important to Jesus that his disciples understand that he is now and will be again with them. Even though he's leaving, he wants to reassure them that they will be together again. This assurance of Jesus' presence with his followers must taste so sweet to his disciples who are so anxious and troubled. And they are sweet to us when we are anxious and troubled or lost or afraid. To add further comfort to his promise, Jesus says that the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. So even though Jesus is leaving, even though he will no longer be with the disciples in the only way that they have known him, they will not be alone. God will send the Holy Spirit into the hearts of the disciples. 
into the community of Christians to teach them, to teach us, to remind Christians in every age of what Jesus said and to show us how to follow the way of the risen Christ. I think perhaps the most wonderfully reassuring word of all, maybe the tastiest bite comes next, and it's the priceless gift of the peace of Christ, the nourishing and most delicious feast that Jesus offers us over and over again, and it will be the first gift that Jesus gives to his disciples after he's raised from the dead. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. These are truly words to savor for followers of Jesus in every age. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. You can imagine other metaphors other than the mindful meal, we could say that these are words to burn into our minds, to tattoo on our hearts, to paint on the walls of our homes and our churches, and to teach our children and our grandchildren. These are words to memorize and recite often, words that can soothe us to sleep at night and wake us with joy in the morning. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. I think of that verse as God's tender embrace of us, God's frightened and overwhelmed children in every age. They're like a parent scooping up a child who is exhausted and crying at the end of a tough day. Or like a spouse comforting us after a bad dream, reminding us of what is real and what is not reassuring us that we're safe and we're loved and everything is okay. Jesus is saying, no matter what is happening right now, I love you and you will always be with me. Be at peace now. Do not be afraid. Do not be troubled. Abide in my love. Rest there. Make my peace your home. Our colleague for today says that God has prepared for us such good things as surpass our understanding and exceed all we can desire. Those good things are the love of God and the peace of Christ and the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit. Savor those good things. Enjoy the feast God has prepared for you. Thank you. 
of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, who believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, who acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, who look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Rejoicing in the mighty acts of God who has delivered us from sin and death through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us lift our voices and pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks for the multitude of blessings showered upon us, for our lives and for those who we love, for the beauty of this home God has created for us, for our families and our friendships. Let us give thanks to the God of life. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church that it may carry forward the redemptive works of God. For our deacon, our rector, our bishop, for the many lay people who serve the church and serve the world through the church. For our knitting group and our yoga classes, for those who gather here to worship and pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the nations and the peoples of the world that the powers that oppress and destroy may be blind. And justice, peace, and prosperity be lifted up. We pray especially for peace in Ukraine. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are sick, those who suffer, and those who struggle, that the hope born of Easter may give them peace, acceptance, and renewal, and that through their struggles they may come into a closer communion with God, the God who redeems and restores. Pray especially for those on our parish prayer list. Charles, Judy, Cliff, Joan, Sarah, Melissa, Jan, and Collins. We pray for the Afghan refugee family that we are helping as they make their new life in Rome. And we pray for those who we now name. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died. <clears throat> May they rest in peace and rise in glory.
it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
your hearts by faith in the place of the body of Christ.
Christ our Lord. Amen. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Amen. 